George the Tech. Hey everybody, it's George the Tech. Well, it's time to get into some audio training, specifically now focused on Adobe Audition. And more specifically, this is going to be companions to our already growing library of Adobe Audition training. This is now going to be specifically about dynamics. That's right, controlling dynamic range of audio so that the quieter stuff can be brought up louder and the loudest parts of the audio can be contained, controlled, brought back down to prevent that sort of hard to listen to audio. You know, the thing is, if your audio has big spikes in the dynamic range where certain words stick up louder than everything else, that's going to control really how loud your file can sound or really rather the average volume the way the loudness will appear to the listener. If there's too many big spikes in the audio that are above the average audio level, it will make the audio sound quieter. Even if the peaks are already at say minus three or even zero. So dynamic tools allow us to control this. And let me show you some of the tools that are available to you and how they actually work. And we'll even get into how you can adjust them and tune them for your needs. Well, let's start with some audio. Let's record some audio now. So this is going to be some samples. I'll start at a normal speaking volume, and then I'll kind of get a little bit too loud all of a sudden. I actually got into the clipping range, which ideally is not what you want to do. So I'm going to adjust my recording level gain and bring it back about 5 dB. And I'll do the same thing now. So let's say I'm reading a script and I hit the beginning of each sentence. Now you want to go down and buy that new truck. Go on down and get that truck. Okay. So here's an example of an audio file that's too spiky, too peaky. And it's going to give you a lot of trouble getting a nice even delivery and a good RMS or average audio level. Okay, let's take a look. I'm going to throw out the first half where I had the most clipping. I'm going to inspect this to make sure I didn't clip too much. Hit the beginning of each sentence. Yeah, it, it, it still sounds a bit clipped. Now you want to go down and go on down and hit the beginning of each sentence. You know what? I'm going to still, I, I still want to re-record this. I don't want to get even close to clipping. Okay, so... I'm going to reduce my gain. It's at 40 now. I'm going to drop it down to 35, and I'm going to keep trying until I keep out of the clip range. All right, now we're recording at 35 dB of gain, and let's see if I can get a level that lands mostly in the yellow. I always say if it's in the yellow, let it mellow. And now let's see what happens when we're doing a hard sell read and we hit the beginning of each sentence or we hit certain words giving them a much bigger spike of energy. Now you got to come on down and buy one of our amazing trucks. Come on over. Come on down. Sunday. You got to get one of our great trucks. Okay, there you go. So now we have some quieter audio, some louder audio that's more peaky and spiky. And you can see how it all kind of varies up and down as I do the performance. Now that's something we can work with. Now you got to come on down and buy one of our amazing trucks. Come on over. Come on down. I'll go ahead and throw out the first part where we had some clipping. And now we've got a good audio sample we can start experimenting with. I'll go ahead and just save this as a test file. I like to record in 48 kilohertz, 24 bit and keep my files stored in that format. You don't have to have such a high uh, bit rate, but I find it's the best bit rate these days because our equipment's very good at capturing 24-bit sample rates, and it can capture the widest possible dynamic range this way. There is a default setting of 32-bit float. I don't find it necessary in any way uh, for a voiceover track. I find it's more data, more overhead, and it doesn't contribute to the sound quality. All right, let's start experimenting and poking around in our dynamics tools. So I'll go to effects and 
they pretty much do a good job of organizing all the Dynamics tools into one subfolder. In uh, they're calling it the Amplitude and Compression folder. I would have just called it Dynamics, but that's okay. Everything having to do with Dynamics is in one handy place. So let's just sort of go through the list so we can inspect and see what all these different Dynamics related tools can do. The very first one and the most basic of all Dynamics tools is Amplify. And to be really strict about it, it's not a dynamic range control. It's simply a volume control and really nothing else. And I find that I never open and use the effect amplify tool because there's an amplify amplitude adjustment right inside the actual wave window. There's this little, little handle, this little knob floats on the screen. It's right there where you can get to it. Having a secondary plugin that you have to load to do the same thing to me, just doesn't make any sense. But anyway, this does the same thing. You can add level and you can subtract level using the amplify tool and then just clicking apply. You can also hear the change that you're making in real time when you hit play, but watch out. You can add much too much gain and actually distort the audio. All right. Now we're recording at 35 dB of gain and let's see if I, now you got to come on down and buy one of our, see that I'm now actually pushing into the clipping range because I added too much gain. So you got to be very careful about adding gain using a tool like this. I don't recommend it. I recommend using normalize instead, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Going into our list, let's go down onto the plugin called Channel Mixer. What Channel Mixer does is simply only <laughs> provide a level for that track. It's all it does. So if we want to turn down the track, you can turn it down. Um, why does this matter? And why would you want to play with this plugin? It actually has zero bearing on doing a mono recording. Really, this is designed for, and if we look at the presets, there are a whole bunch of very specific algorithms in here for mixing stereo to mono or multi-channel surround sound down to lower track or lower channel count recordings. This is really irrelevant in every way for voiceover. So don't ever need to look at that one ever again. Forget the channel mixer. Next on the list is de -esser. Now this one you will actually want to pay attention to. de is a special type of dynamics control that actually controls dynamic range, but only in a frequency band that you choose. Okay. So I find myself most often using it in broadband mode. And then what I do is I'm going to shift around what's called the center frequency to figure out where I want to adjust and reduce sibilance. Now, the best way to actually pinpoint the sibilance sounds is actually to turn it on and actually engage output sibilance only. So I'll do that now. And let's take a listen and see if there actually is any sibilance that we want to remove. So first I'll... Uh, Re, I'll, I'll raise the threshold all the way to zero so it has no effect. And now let's see what happens when we're doing a hard cell read and we hit the beginning of each sentence. When we hit certain words, giving them... Now I'll start reducing the threshold. Energy. Now you got to come on down and buy one of our amazing trucks. Come on over. Come on down. Sunday, you got to get one of our great trucks. So we seem to have found a frequency where if I was sibilant, those sibilant frequencies might jump out at you. I don't have a particularly sibilant voice, and I'm also using a microphone that has a really smooth top end response that doesn't boost and exaggerate sibilance. This happens to be an Austrian Audio OC818, one of my favorites, such a smooth mic. But I wanted to show you where and how you would tune this to deal with sibilance. So you have to figure out the frequency where the sibilance stands out. And here it seemed to be a little bit of brightness at 8,000 hertz or thereabouts. Next, I'm going to play with my bandwidth. This is controlling how wide of an area I consider to be part of my sibilance problem. 